Hello boys and girls, welcome to another episode of Folks Brow. Yes, it's been a, a long time. Uh, I've been rather busy uh, with work and other things, so yeah, it's it's been a while. Uh, there'll be some updates in future where I'll talk about it and uh, and bring you guys up to scratch. Um, there's some things that I want to talk about before we jump on the on the bench today. Um, I am not a electronic repair house. I am not an electronic repair technician or an engineer or whatever. I do these repairs to teach you, to show you what to look for. I have no problem with anyone sending me a board in if you're a hobbyist or whatever and you got a little bit stuck and I can't help you in the comments or directly or via email or whatever. But the moment that you're actually doing this for a living and you're sending me your boards to repair for your company, business, whatever, I have an issue with that. Now, I'm to blame for this. I have not made it clear up front. I'm a practicing CNI engineer. I, in other words, a control instrumentation engineer. I work for a consultancy firm. My job is automation and control, instrumentation, things like that, uh, design of systems, and, and th that's what I do for a living. I do these videos in my spare time as a hobby, uh, mainly for me to keep my eye in, my hand in, and to see how technology changes, and, and that sort of thing. I do not repair people's goods for a living. So, I just want to make that clear up front and I apologize to anyone that has sent me a board from a company or whatever and say, please repair. I can't do that. I, I do this as a hobby. I do this for fun and I do this to teach people. I don't do this for side cash or whatever. By all means, if you're a hobbyist and or somebody that's trying to learn electronics on the side and you get stuck, by all means, I'm willing to answer anything in the comments. And if you get stuck really badly, you can send me a board, of course, I'll have a look at it and I'll repair it. Anyway, that being said, I do have a board sent in from a hobbyist that sent me a board before. I don't know what he sent me today, so we're going to jump on the bench. We'll have a look at it, we'll unbox it together and we'll see. Um, I've got this extended arm, a new edition. So hopefully that will give us a better top-down view of what we're actually seeing and what we're doing. So let's jump on the bench and let's have a look and see what's going on. Right, here we are on the bench. I don't mind uh, disclaiming who I work for, sorry for bumping, or the name of my the company that I work for, my address, um, you can see a little LCD display on there that's coming up why we're using that. Anyway, uh, this board was sent to me by John Davy, all the way from East London in South Africa. Now John has sent me boards before and I do know East London rather well from uh, when I was young, my, my family had extended family up there, whatever. And uh, they sent us, uh, well, we used to go there a lot on holiday and whatever. So yeah, very beautiful part of the world. Um, this LCD is part of our Back to Basics um, series. It's coming up. Let me see if I can do this without bumping it too much. You will see up here. We'll take the lock on or we'll take it off and you can see we've got a bit of circuitry up here and we've got a little board running down there um, 
If you remember, in the back to basic circuits, we've done stuff with series pass elements, DC to DC converters. Uh, I don't know if I did linear voltage regulators up there, of amps. Uh, down there, crowbar short circuit protection. And over here, we've got a, uh, a rather nice microcontroller running that we'll be covering rather soon. Um, very interesting little microcontroller. I was actually tempted to use a microchip pick to do this. And then I came across this uh, little controller that offers Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and all sorts of fancy stuff. And it, it's actually running a, a web server. Anyway, we will get to that in future. At the moment, what it's doing is it's just talking via I squared C to this LCD. It's uh, measuring the ambient temperature, the ambient uh, humidity. I'm doing a little bit of a calculation there to get the dew point or wet bulb temperature. And uh, here we're just measuring the output of the ob amp. It's driving the series, series pass element and scaled it to uh, rubbish. But anyway, enough of that. Let's unbox this and see what's here. Right, here we are. Um, let's see. I'm just using a good old fashioned paint scraper to open this. It is very sharp. Uh, be careful. I also use them for <laughs> opening. Instead of using a smudge, I use them to open stuff. Ah, nice note. Uh, basically, John's just saying, uh, Hi Craig, thanks for your willingness to look at another board. This is from the Children. No, but a different manufacturer. I'm very intrigued by the little bridge DB1065 just next to the fuse and the 220 volt input end. And he wants to know what the function is. Okay. We'll have a look at that. We'll make a note. I should actually have mounted this. Uh, let me just change the old exposure here. Here's our board, nicely packaged. <laughs> Very different board. bring this into focus and then we will come back. Alright, here we have our board out on the bench. John, I don't see the bridge that you're looking for. Here's your AC mains coming in. You've got your main rectifier, the bulk storage capacitor. your driving FET and your flyback diode. Of course, this is a Shanghai Eway Electronics Company Limited board model B307D. We've got our fuse with a small little rectifier down there. Of course, we've got the normal safety capacitors and surge protection mobs, safety capacitors, capacitors for noise suppression, and what looks to be a little NTC down there, negative temperature coefficient resistor, meaning that the more the temperature of the device rises, the less the resistance becomes. So that's normally with that uh, what looks like a 100 ohm resistor down there. 
that will have to do with the charging of this capacitor for the inrush. So uh, basically when the power comes in, this thing will offer a very high resistance because it will be cold. And as the temperature that goes up, because obviously the current starts flowing through it, uh, you will have heat dissipation, the resistance will start coming down, more current can flow to that capacitor. So really you're just limiting the inrush. But I do not see unless no, I don't see a DB would be a diode bridge and only two that I know of are here of course this is your main diode bridge this smaller diode bridge is there for the switching circuit the DC DC converter switching circuit that would power the microcontroller behind this now what they've done is they've got a control board up here where well, you can't really see they've got a whole bunch of ICs and stuff on there I'm hoping our problem doesn't lie there it shouldn't so first things first let me get my multimeter and what we want to do diode mode continuity mode we want to check if this fuse is all right yeah the fuse is all right we can check the bridge rectifier swap the terminals so what I'm getting there is AC to positive and we go the other way AC to negative that's fine I think that bridge rectifier is fine let's check this little one down here I'm going to say this is the AC side. Let's try it that way. So those two bridges are fine. What else can we have a problem with? Well, we can have a problem with this FET. So I'm going to measure in there on those pins. I'll use the red to show you the three pins left to right. The gate, the drain, and the source normally. So let's just short my multimeter and we'll try it and see what's going on here. Whoops, we have a short. So if you look at what I'm measuring, I'm measuring those two pins. Basically, the source and the drain. We have a short in both directions. So that fit is definitely gone. This diode bridge or dual diode perfect go the other way 
All I'm measuring is from the middle leg to the outside. And I'm expecting to see a diode drop. Now one leg of it looks bugged. If I go middle leg to the right hand side, you're right. We did measure a diode drop. Sorry for bumping you there. So there I'm getting a diode drop. A diode drop. Ah, the capacitor is charging up, so that's fine. So definitely I don't suspect that. But this fit definitely remember I'm measuring from the middle leg to the end, in other words the drain to the source and it's shorted in both directions. So let me take this board out of this heat sink and then we will come back. So there I've taken the board out of the heat sink and of course as suspected our micro lies on this little control board up here and why I say that if I turn it upside down you can see there's a whole bunch of marking on here for it ground VDD up down VREF coming from over there that's fine and we've got reset mode speed keys a whole bunch of stuff ah, not a train smash what I want to do is let's first take out this FET or IGBT they've marked it as FET so we'll take it out and we'll make sure that it is stuffed. So I should be able to do this online. And all I'm using is a little bit of flux. And I'm going to put it over there. My solar iron should be hot. Now first things first, also, I'm going to just reflow this with a bit of leaded solder because we want to suck it out. None of that lead free rubbish. Of course, now we've put uh, some new solder. Let's bring it down. We'll change the lock. Now I'm just gonna suck the old solder out. Nothing really to it. Of course, the board is moving. Let's do it like this from the side. Really not much good. And we'll keep going you can see that we're starting to get the holes. In other words, we're getting all of the rubbish out. So 
Let's try and get this last bit out. Of course, you want to be careful when you're doing this. You don't want to keep your soldering iron on this stuff too long. So, while I'm going to put my solder in the holder, I just put a bit of solder on. Now I'm going to get a bit of uh, flux. Just put it over here again. Because this last bit is a little bit... Uh, stubborn so what I'm going to use is braid just to get those last bits out that's all I'm doing putting the braid down as you can see I'm moving the legs up just to make sure we've got it all that looks fine yeah the component's still hot obviously so which leg is it sticking on None. And there we put our component out. So I'll move the board out. And now you can see the three legs that I'm talking about. drain to source short so that component is definitely gone if you're wondering what it is IRQP oh I can't read the other bit Ah, oh, let me use a microscope or oh, a magnifying glass. IRGP46400. And it looks like it's from International Rectifier. So, let's see if I have a fit like that. And then we will come back. So, there we go. If we were wondering what it was, it's a insulated gate bipolar transistor, or in other words, an IGBT, with an ultra-fast soft recovery diode, in other words, between the emitter and collector. Um, 600 volt, 40 amp. Now... Let's see. What are we really interested in? Well, collect emitter voltage, max 600 volts. Uh, continuous collector current, 40 amp. Uh, we don't care about that. Continuous gate to emitter voltage, 20. Let's see. I don't care about the thermal characteristics. Collector emitter saturation 1.9. I don't care too much about that. What I do care about is this gate threshold voltage 4 to 6.5. Uh, 
four to six point five. Um, and of course, the package type is a TO two four seven. Right, let's see if I. Well, even before we go there, let's put power on it because we've taken the the switching diode out. Let's see if the board even switches on. So let me bring the board back. We'll put power on and see what happens. Of course, before we put uh, power on the board, let's just measure the live of the neutral leg. I just want to see what the resistance is between it. Uh, 20, 21. 21 and climbing, 22 meg. So that should be fine. So of course, we'll put our live leg on, put our negative, and we'll hold guns and plug it in and see what happens. Okay. You probably can't see, but I can see. I'll sit down under there. There's a little LED that came on. Be very careful now. So what I'm going to measure is DC voltage across that collector emitter. Hundred and fifty two volts. If we measure the gate to the emitter. Don't expect to see much because it shouldn't be firing. That little chip down there, I haven't had a look at. But I suspect that it is our switcher. Let's see if we've got anything across the motor terminals. I don't think that we should have 100 volt. Interesting. But I don't suspect anything down there because of that LED switching on. Let's just measure across these optocouplers. Of course, I'm just measuring randomly here. Five, four point five volts, one point three. Of course, why I'm doing this, five volt is I am just checking that we've got sort of voltages that we expect. In other words, I expect to see 5 volts, 3.3 volts, things like that, which would tell me that the, I don't want to go putting my finger in there, it would tell me that that switcher is working. So clearly, it was just that IGBT 
Now, I don't know if I have an IGBT like that. I'm sure I have got something pretty similar. Very interesting though. I, I measured across that IGBT and I got a hundred and what was it? 145 volts. I was expecting to clearly they're dropping that voltage down because if I measure across my bridge rectifier, AC mains rectified, I'm expecting to see oh, 320 plus volts. And in this case, I'm getting, oh, it helps if I put the polarity the right way around. Try and measure around so you can see positive to negative. Two hundred and fifty volts. No, that I didn't expect to see. But anyway. So somewhere they are doing a voltage divider of sorts. <coughs> but not to worry, that LED is switched on. So this little switching transformer down here, I suspect that's the off, well, offline switcher of sorts. This part of the circuitry is working fine. As you can see, we measured 5 volts and such down here. So I don't suspect any problem. Of course, what we could do, being very careful, is if I switch the board over and we go and measure on that board, we can measure the uh, voltage and the against the ground and see that it's being supplied right, which would t definitely confirm that that little switcher in there is working fine. So let me do that and we'll come back. And of course, as luck would have it, I do have a replacement IGBT for this. Very similar characteristics. Um, the part number, in case you're wondering, G4PC40UD, also from International Rectifier or Infineon, whatever they call themselves to the, today. So, what we need to do is we need to solder the component in. You can see it's also got a metal back. But if you remember, they were nice and they provided us these feel like a, a mica type insulator. Anyway, we're going to push the component in. And we're just waiting for the soldering iron to warm up. This time we won't be using a flux. No need, because we're soldering it straight back with a leaded solder. If I, uh, what do I do with it? So, the replacement bed I actually got from Communica. I just happened to have them on stock from something that I repaired before. So we clean our soldering iron tip off and very easily. We're only going to do one leg. Soldering iron one side to heat it up and solder from the other side. We push it in, pull it away and pull the iron away. Now, of course, 
but want to get it straight. And there we go. So now, very simply, we can do the other legs. Again, same thing. Just go back to the first one and make sure that everything took. That looks all right to me. Of course, you want to cut off the extra leg length, hold your thumb over it. You don't want to hurt your eyes and then cut right on the solder just above it and at a little angle just like that and what we'll do is we'll take an old toothbrush coarsen it up a bit of isopropyl alcohol and we just clean it so that it looks nice and professional. And of course, when it looks like nobody's ever been in here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, that looks fine to me. So, nothing left to do but now to put the, the board back into the housing or the heat sink. Of course it slides in nicely. We'll put these back. I must just find the other one. And we'll put, well actually I'm going to take it off, I'm going to clean basically I'm just going to clean the the heat sink for this old uh, I'm losing my mind <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's bad getting off. Uh, basically, this thermal compound, I'm just going to clean it off. And then we'll put new thermal compound and we'll put everything back together. So, here we are back. I thought I'd just show you how much thermal compound I'm putting on. You really don't need a lot of it. The point of it is just to transfer the heat. If you put too much on, you obviously destroy the point of the thermal compound and you are creating extra resistance. So all I use is a toothpick and you really don't want much of this. So all I'm doing, I just spread it on like that, very thin. Even that's a bit too much. As you can see, really not much. There we go, that's a bit better. You really don't want much. And of course you can flame me in the comments below. I don't particularly care. And the same for the rectifier now. Really very thin. You don't need much of this stuff. It's there just to dissipate the heat. It 
can't see it's rather thin. And of course now we'll do it to the mica, oh, these ceramic mica type things, insulators. We'll put the board back into the into the heat sink and then uh, we'll come back. And here we go. We've uh, put the heat sink back and the only thing left to do is to check it again. Of course I don't think there's anything else wrong. Oh, sorry for bumping you. I need to change where this arm is sitting. I think I need to mount it from above. Oh, we'll put our live and neutral on. We'll plug it in. And of course the LED comes on. Some last let's move this over obviously so you can see i'm just going to measure the igbt collector emitter being very careful of course 120 volts dc course there's nothing on the gate yet. Now of course I could put a scope on this. I see that voltage is climbing. Not an issue. I did measure on the, the back of this micro unit and in this case it's very strange you're getting a Well, not really strange if you think of it. So what we have here is LM7812. That's got a 14 or 15 volt input. It's giving me 12 volt out, which is going to that board. But either way, that's fine because that micro is working. So once again, we'll measure across the collector emitter of the IGBT. And our voltage has grown quite a bit, 143, which sounds about right for the motor. 100, yeah, 100 volts across the motor terminals. I was thinking 120 for some stupid reason, but anyway, it doesn't matter. I've checked the discrete components, the optocouplers, the transistors, diodes and things like that, but I don't think there's anything wrong there. Uh, the big thing was that FET. So I'm going to, well, there's no point in leaving them. The motor running. Just out of curiosity, I see we've got up, down, and common here. I wonder what we're going to measure here. So I measure, let's try DC voltage to the common. I think that's AC voltage. Yo, 200. Well, you can't really see there, you can see. 200 volt AC from the common to the up and down. So obviously the elevation of the treadmill. So all in all, be careful when you're playing with these things and you're repairing them. And remember that bulk storage capacitor will hold charge for a long 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 time although I don't really see except down let's get a better pointer 
Except mm -hmm. down in there, there's a rather large power resistor there. So those might be the discharge. One of them will be the discharge resistors. And then we've got uh, power resistors down here. Zeno probably. And this will all be voltage regulation. Unless it's that Zeno down there for that switcher. So I will be in touch with John to see exactly what it was. I suspect he didn't say in his note. I suspect it's just a motor that wasn't firing. And we know why, because that IGBT in there was gone. Anyway, we're going to leave it there as always. I'm not going to close out. I'll leave it from here. Hope as always you had fun. Hope you learned something. And we'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Be safe.